Welcome back. Welcome, Mary Fran. Thank, Thank you. you for joining us today. Thank you. Why don't we start out with you giving us a little bit of background about how you got into family law and where you started and how you got to where you are now. Okay, well, I'm originally from New Jersey, yes. where it's very cold and snows, <laughs> and so I graduated from Rutgers and knew that I wanted to move to the Beaufort area. I'd been coming here since I was a child. I knew this is where I wanted to be, so I went to the University of South Carolina for law school, but first I joined the Marine Corps, oh. and so then I went to the University of South Carolina for law school, and after I graduated from the University of South Carolina, I went to training for the Marine Corps, the basic school, Naval Justice School, and then I was stationed at Paris Island, which is, for anybody who's not from here, right across from Beaufort, within Beaufort. So and when I was on active duty, I did about two years of defense work and about two years of legal okay. assistance, which is basically family law. Mm -hmm. And that's when I learned that I really, really understand and like doing family law. Okay, great. Well, we're glad that we're glad that you do that, and we love working with you. Wonderful. That's great. We do. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I think we're going to circle back to a question that was asked a little bit ago that we wanted to ask directly to you, and the question is: Do you tell your clients what to do, or do you help them make the best decisions for themselves? Well, I was wondering if I was the pit bull attorney that Monica <laughs> was asking about because I hear that so often when people come in. And I say to them, you know, that's really nice that other people are saying these horrible things about me that help sell me, <laughs> but in reality, I'm hardest on my clients. Mm -hmm. And I say that to them. I say, you know, when we walk out of these doors, whatever you want, ultimately, you're paying me to advocate for you. As long as it's not unethical or illegal or damaging to my professional reputation, I will go out and let you spend $3,000 to fight over a $20 end table because it means that much to you. Yeah but I'm going to tell you why you're wasting your money and why you're wasting your resources. Mm -hmm. But I never tell a client what decision to make. I always present them with as many options as possible, particularly when it's a strategic question for trial. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, he, isn't paying, uh, he isn't paying the credit card bill on time. I want to rule him in. I want a contempt action. Will you do that? And I'll say, Okay, well, let's talk about it. Why isn't he paying the, the payment on time? Well, he just got laid off. Okay, well, we could still do a contempt action or a rule to show cause if you want, but a defense is the inability to pay. So then I flesh it all out. And then I frequently, I'm, I'm really big in giving what I call my homework, mm -hmm. handwritten notes. I think you guys have probably Good. seen my clients yeah. come in with my handwritten. I do it on purpose so I can always recognize. Yeah. And I'll write down, here are your options. You know, option A is the pit bull attack, um, and this is what I think the likelihood of success for that is, and why you mm -hmm. should do that. One thing I love about you, from personal um, experience with joint clients, is that you really do want the individuals to move forward in a positive direction. You really do want them to transition through this process in the best possible way, and you're really open to them making decisions outside of your room. But if that goes awry, you are so ready to be that aggressive attorney, and that's such a great mix. I mean, it's really very good. Well, I appreciate that. I, I will say, good. though, that what I frequently say to clients, too, is that in family law, if you do complex cases, and complex doesn't always mean a lot of money. Sometimes mm -hmm. it can be custody battles. Sometimes there might be international components. There can be lots of things that make a case complex. But if you do complex work, it means you love to litigate mm -hmm. because you're going to court a lot. And I tell clients right. all the time, I love to litigate, and I've got lots of children to put through college. So if you <laughs> want me to litigate, I'm happy to do it, and I like to litigate, but my happiest clients control their own destiny, settle their cases quickly, have minimal contact with me. Mm -hmm. Right. So what, what do you do if a client sits in front of you and says, I don't know what to do, just tell me? I to send them to you guys. <laughs> um, you know, it, 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 depends on the, it depends on what it is they're confused about. Obviously, I don't send people to you if their question is, should I take, should I separate the twins? Right, right. Um, but, if I send them to therapists, and everyone gets a list of therapists that I've worked with, and I say just because you might have a therapist that's not on this list that I don't even know about, tell me if you have a good experience with someone. Um, but if it's money, mm -hmm. I tell people all the time, there are two things that save clients thousands in legal fees, private investigators 
and divorce financial planners. And I say, you know, I'm happy to sit here at, you know, my hourly rate and go over how much you have for a cell phone bill and how we can reduce your cell phone plan to make it more effective for you, but that doesn't <laughs> seem like a good use of your money. But I will do it. Right. And I have. Yeah. But when they come in and they say, I always say to the clients, what's your what's your end game? What's your wish list? If I could get you anything you want. I love that. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, my I Key West that. story. Yes. I say I'd be living in Key West in a trailer. That's what my end game if you let me. <laughs> but but I say what's your end game? And then I say, can we, you know, what do I need to get you there? Mm -hmm. But you know, you know, you can't ask me. I'm not a CPA. I'm not a forensic accountant. I'm not right. a financial planner. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know how to get you an eight yeah. or six or a four percent return or how much you need based on that. If you can bring to me a plan that's been put in place with a clean financial declaration and preferably a marital asset addendum that shows how we're getting there, then it's my job to then take that and go and see. And sometimes they'll come and I'll say, I can't do this. You know, I. He'll never agree to give you all the cash, or she's never going to let you keep the marital home. Mm -hmm. But then we can move things. But I love that right. approach, and it really gives the client the real uh, uh, feeling that you are looking at everything in her best interest, and you are looking to save them time and money and stress by using other professionals to help with the whole team and the whole process. It really is so much better for anyone going through this process. Yeah. When I do consults, I say to them all the time that in my years of experience, I, I try to be holistic because I only do family law. Mm -hmm. And I'm all about, I say, I know what I don't know, and I know what you don't need to pay me to do. Mm -hmm. That's, that's you know? great, yeah. Mm -hmm. And if they yeah. sometimes people don't make decisions thinking, well, we can work this out, so I'm not going to go get these experts because I'm already paying so much to the attorney. Mm -hmm. and sometimes we'll get into the case period of time and I'll say, I'm not saying I told you so, but what I'm saying is, now I have yeah. to have someone who can give me this information. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we we tell our clients that as well. You know, so many or people think when they're going through a divorce, the first call is to their attorney. But if they do some homework ahead of time, mm -hmm. it, it gets them so much farther down the road and more Absolutely. quickly. And that actually goes to my next question. What can a client do in preparation for working with you so that they can be most prepared? I do a very, very detailed initial consult. It's just my style. Every mm -hmm. attorney has a different style. My style isn't the most um, lucrative for me, but allows me to make informed decisions and allow them to make informed decisions. And, mm -hmm. and part of that, I'll say, what you talked about with style, is I say I always give people the names of other attorneys that I think might be a good fit for them. And they're mm -hmm. usually people that I practice with that I like, that I respect. And I genuinely gauge the person and say, you know, so if you leave here and you say, a crazy redhead was fast talking and it, you know, <laughs> I didn't understand half the stuff she said and she made my head hurt and my dad hated her, go see someone else because a lot of it's about style. We'll all ultimately come to the same thing. But one of the other things I say to them is, before they come in, the person who takes their call says, bring five years worth of tax returns. Um, you know, it, again, it depends. If it's an emergency protective order or a complex custody matter, it might be different, but I always need five years worth of tax returns. Okay. Get me any kind of um, documents that you have related to retirement accounts. Show us what you own and what you don't own complete this financial declaration. Okay. And a lot of times I also have clients come in 30 minutes beforehand and I intentionally ask them to fill out the paperwork while they're sitting there mm -hmm. because it gets your head in the game. Because mm -hmm. so many people do come in crying and upset right. and worked up and they and they want to spend the first hour getting therapy. And I say, I'm a great therapist, but I am <laughs> not really licensed to do it. Yeah. Right. And so if you can stay focused, if you've met with a financial planner ahead of time, if you've met with, you know, and it, some people can't afford a divorce financial planner, but do you have someone in your family who's good with numbers? Can your right. brother-in-law sit down and, you know, when people come and say, I don't know what I need and I don't know what I have, it's very expensive. Yes. I'm happy to help them. But yeah. subpoenas are not the least expensive way to get your information. Right, mm -hmm. absolutely. So can you go over with us what exactly is complex litigation? In my opinion, because we don't have a family law specialty in this state, which would define something like that, complex litigation is anything that I think is very likely to end up a trial. Okay. Um, and even if it doesn't end up a trial, and the majority of them don't, anything that's a, a high net value case oftentimes will be considered complex. But sometimes you 
having a lot of money doesn't make it complex because they're easily able to divide. Right. But if you mix debt into the mix, particularly during the recession, you know, if you make $60,000 a month, but you spend $62,000 a month, that's a complex litigation case because right. alimony, those sorts of issues make it very complex. Anything that would be subjective to a judge makes it complex. Okay. So, how many cases, just to be curious, <coughs> yeah. how many cases do you think actually go to, lit to court, to litigation, percentage-wise? Well, I think that it depends on the attorneys. Honestly, different lawyers have different ways they manage. You know, not everyone does only family law. That might be just be a small portion of their practice. For me, I say, I would say that at least 15% of my cases get to up to the brink of trial. And I'd say probably about 10% of my cases go to an actual That's trial. That's what I was thinking. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so yes, much for being here. We so enjoy working with you. Yes, we do. Well, your, thanks your for having whole firm. me. Absolutely. Yes. And thank you for joining us. If you want to reach out to us, if you want to write us a letter or an email to ask a question that we can address on a later show, please do. Our email is info at divorce, the letter U, solutions.com. And remember, we chat because you matter.